Hey, it's Jeff Zito, and thanks for checking out yet another episode of the Celebrity Jobber Podcast. What if these celebrities took a different path and they weren't famous? Who knows what would have become of Patrick Warburton, the actor who played the character of David Putty in one of the greatest sitcoms of all time, my favorite show, Seinfeld. Yeah, that's right. He looks like a pretty big guy. Maybe he played sports in high school or college. Maybe he would have went that route. What got him into acting? What was his first job? And what's he got going on these days? Actor Patrick Warburton is my guest this week on Celebrity Jobber. The Celebrity Jobber Podcast with Jeff Zito. If you like what you hear, please subscribe. What if these celebrities weren't famous? What would they have become? What was their first job? We're about to find out. Patrick, how are you, man? Zito, how are you doing? I'm doing, yeah. I'm doing good, brother. You, you still you st- go by. Well, Zito is my last name, but my my first name is Jeff. You can call me either or. Yeah, I'll call you Zito, and you call me Warps. What, what do you want me to call you? That's what I, I always ask people. Like, what do your friends call you? Warps. Warps or uh, Patty. Warps. Warps or Patty. Do you know what you know what Kid Rock told me to call him? <laughs> Bob. Bob, he's Bob. Yeah, uh, well, I, I've done a little damage with uh, Kid Rock and David Spade because everybody's you know Bobby and Davey. And we were so we we hung out in Vegas one night, and then uh, we were at show we were playing golf, and we uh, we uh, had a few drinks. Right. I go, yeah, I go by. I go, yeah, I tell people like golf. Oh, if you wanna, if you wanna feel invisible, walk around Las Vegas with uh, Kid Rock and David Spade. <laughs> And Robbie goes, you could have just said me. <laughs> <laughs> He's a trip. He's a trip, man. No self-confidence. You're from Jersey. Born and raised or just born in Jersey? Born in Jersey, but it always gave me, you know, street cred. Yeah. Uh, I grew up in Huntington Beach. As an actor, it doesn't give you any street cred if you're from Huntington Beach. So I just would let him know I was from Jersey. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so your dad was a, an orthopedic surgeon. Mom was an actress. Was it mom that got yeah. gave, bit you, give you the bug? Yeah, I'd watch her do community theater in Huntington Beach uh, because I really had nowhere else to go when I was 13. I'd hang out backstage and watch them rehearse a play. And then I'd see them do the play, you know, and then I'd see how different audiences responded. And so I started making those observations, you know, as like a little 13 year old critic, I'd walk backstage and I talk to all the different actors. I go, you got a big laugh here and here. I go, well, the audience is great tonight, but you guys were on fire. This scene really, you know, it was just one of those things that sort of ingrained me. It's like, Oh, this looks like fun. And I guess, you know, I just didn't see myself going anywhere in school. I sort of slowly stopped going to class when I was in junior college and just said, I'm bailing. Right. I'm going to be an actor. So, okay. So, but you, you look like a, you know, I, I know things can change over the years. You look like a, you know, you're a big guy. You look like you played football or sports. Did you in high school? Uh, I rode crew in college. I wrestled in high school and uh, I rode crew. Uh, so I was, uh, you know, in the eight man boats. And then that was it for my uh, career. Okay. I played golf for 30 years and I still suck at that, but I love yeah. it. Yeah, that's an ongoing challenge for all of us, man. Um, yeah, I, so I see you went to a, a community college in, in, in California and you studied marine biology. Is, what, what did you want to do? What did you think you were going to do? Oh, I would have loved to have done marine biology. I, I, that's a bit of a... Uh, fraudulent there. I, I wasn't going to get into anything in the sciences. I really wasn't. If I did, you know, you end up working for oil companies taking ground samples. You know, that, that, I was always inspired by Jacques Cousteau. And I, if I went into marine science, I wouldn't have been, you know, someone with the fishes. It would have been something different. But I, I you know, I, I never would have made it there. Okay. So you just kind of took that class. It was kind of a kind of an easy thing. You weren't you weren't thinking about after college you would be going into becoming a scientist. No. Okay. no. What did you think? Uh, obviously, acting is uh, you know it's a, it's a dream you know until you make it. But were you, did you have a backup plan? I really didn't. But when you're 19 or 20, it is so important, I think, to follow your dreams because um, I have two sons that are in the business. And I said, listen, I, I, I go, guys, I go, if my last name was, uh, you know, Scorsese or Pitt or Cruz or whatever, it would probably help you more. <laughs> um, it's a tough road out there. And I go, if 
you look at it, it on any given day, only maybe 1% of everybody in the union is actually working on any given day. And only maybe 3% to 4% in the Screen Actors Guild make a living. So I go, don't, you know, what, enjoy the ride. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy that. Right. You cannot be focused on success. I'm not going to be happy until I'm successful. Well, it doesn't matter. I go, that doesn't bring happiness anyways. Because some of the most successful people in the world and the richest people in the world are tragically the most unhappiest people in the world and don't even survive. That's yeah, true. So if you're not enjoying the day, then, then 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 what's the purpose? Has your business really changed in the last five years? Um, yeah, well, I mean, look, a lot's happened. I don't know. There are things that, you know, ebb and flow as far as, you know, what uh, offends people, what doesn't. I think that in the realm of, you know, art and humor, there's got to be some immunity. Um, but, you know, with the COVID and the strikes, yeah, things have changed. You know, I think we're just getting our footing finally again. You know, the industry's been crippled from pandemics and strikes. So uh, it's waking up again. Well, that's good news. What do you think your big break was? Was, was there something that happened to you when you're, because you dropped out of college to, to pursue acting and modeling, but what what was it that happened to you that just kind of put you on the map and you set sail from there? Well, you know, in the earliest days, it was obviously Seinfeld, but before Seinfeld, you know, I was jumping from show to show. And, um, you know, so I would do a guest spot on a sitcom, and it usually went pretty well. They want to make the, the character either recurring or regular. And that was happening on a number of different shows. Uh, so then when I, you know, went in to read for Seinfeld, it was just for one episode. They made, made they, they kept wanting to bring him back. But, um, you know, that's, that's how I got my start was in sitcoms. So I did Ellen's show. You know, I did Mad About You. I did, um, you know, uh, Anything But Love. I think that was the first sitcom I ever did with Jamie Lee Curtis and Richard Lewis. Um, so that was my break, sitcoms. Do you still get people to this day, uh, orbs, come up to you and uh, say, high five or uh, eight ball? Yes, forever. That's in perpetual syndication. And, and is that is that annoying yeah. to you, or do you realize what a, a huge part of pop culture yeah. you were? If it was annoying to me, then, you know, I'd be annoyed the rest of my life, because it's just the way it is with, you know, <laughs> pop culture stuff. And so it, it's fun. Yeah. I don't, you know, it, it's one of those things that will always be there. Just so you know, I'm watching the Olympics the other day. There's Coco Goff. She comes up there with LeBron James. I looked at my wife. I go, Go, go. <laughs> so it's, it happens. It happens in my house too, man. Yeah. What was your very first job, whether it was in the business or outside of the business? First job, first gig, paying. Mm. Uh, I might have been a busboy at a place called Skinny Haven, like a frozen yogurt place that decided to sell more than frozen yogurt, just like health food stuff. Yeah. That was uh, that was when you were in high school? Yeah. I, that's when I was in high school. Oh, boy. Yeah. You've come a long way, my friend. Yeah, well, there's always, I guess, the frozen yogurt biz <laughs> that I could fall back on. They have that experience. Yeah. I just watched the trailer for uh, your new movie, which is called The Duel, and uh, looks yeah. pretty cool. Looks like a guy messing around with some other guy's girlfriend, and uh, maybe a little bit of a fight ensues. Well, you tell me. I don't. I don't. You know better than I do what the damn movie's about. You're in. It's really cool. Let me just say this. You know, when you have a company like Lionsgate that puts out hundred million dollar, you know, action movies, uh, take an independent film and say, uh, no way, this one's got to go on movie screens. So we're gonna put it on five hundred screens. They don't do that with you know independent films. It's very rare. So uh, that's the quality of this picture. Uh, the two young men who wrote and directed this are hugely talented and uh, have like a slate of things in front of them now because everybody in the industry is taking note of what these guys can accomplish. One of the really cool things is that uh, a big part of it is the family. You know, Rachel Matthews, who's wonderful in this film, is a... Uh, you know, uh, Justin Matthews, who wrote and directed it, uh, her, that's his, her brother. Uh, Joe Matthews, who edited and produced the film, is their other brother. Um, they're Hollywood royalty. Their mother is uh, it was Leslie, and then she was Michael Landon's uh, daughter. 
See, so it's, um, this is Michael Landon's legacy and his family. They're all really talented. It was super cool to be a part. The duel, it's a modern day duel. The duel is a lost art. I'm the guy who sort of mentors these two young men who need to settle their differences. And uh, it's a dark comedy and it really works top to bottom. So this is kind of like a, a new model, if you will, for films. You can go to iconic releasing.com the film is in theaters for one night and one night only and you could find out the theaters near you where it's playing at and then it's being released on demand and digitally on august 16th is, is this kind of the new way it goes in movies well this is the first time i've been a part of something like this yeah and so um you know obviously everything so many things just go straight to streaming it's either a, you know like a hundred two hundred million dollar you know the superhero movie or everything else just ends up you know streaming um but the platform it like this is a huge photo of confidence from uh lionsgate yeah they're independent they just go straight to streaming but to get uh, 500 screens is a big deal yeah well let me say let me say man the um thanks for uh thanks for your time today i i really um you know i love I love David Buddy. <laughs> I got to tell you, one of my favorites uh, characters of all time. And we even had a uh, there was like a bracket of uh, Seinfeld characters. And uh, you made it to the final four in my bracket, just so you know. Well, thanks. You listen and uh, check out the film. because I think you're really going to dig it. It's a good one. It's called The Duel and it'll be released to streaming and on demand digitally on August 16th. Patrick Warburton. Warbs. It's great talking to you today, man. Lito. Thanks. Uh, by the way, did not want to talk too much about Seinfeld was like what the publicist said ahead of time. And I was thinking to myself, I was like, wow, it's my favorite show of all time. I definitely have to bring it up. I got to feel them out and see, you know, why is that? I often wonder why, you know, musicians don't want to play their biggest hit in concert sometimes. I mean, it's just kind of a, a weird thing. If you're known for playing a character, you know, and you, you walk up to that person and you, you know, say, you know, what you talking about, you know, to um, Gary Coleman, he would get pissed off. That was like a, a real thing. That would happen. Now, I don't think that was what we were talking about with uh, Patrick Warburton, but I, I did get a heads up that he really wasn't too fond of talking a lot about Seinfeld. Uh, and I could kind of tell when I did bring it up about, you know, how much I was a fan and asked him if it bothered him, if people, you know, came up to him and said, you know, high five. Because when he was telling the story uh, about when he was in college and he was studying marine biology, I mean, for God's sakes, I, I was so close to saying, hey, excuse me, is there a marine biologist? If you're a fan of Seinfeld, you'll know exactly what episode I'm talking about right there. <laughs> I mean, other than that, Patrick Warburton seems like a pretty regular guy. It was his mother who was an actress that gave him the, the acting bug in Huntington Beach, California, where he grew up. Born in New Jersey, gave him street cred, really grew up in Huntington Beach. Mom did some community theater. He used to hang out there, and he kind of loved it. Obviously, his big break was the role of David Putty in Seinfeld. But um, before that, he mentioned he was, you know, kind of a, a character on a lot of different sitcoms, uh, bouncing from sitcom to sitcom. He mentioned Mad About You, something with Jamie Lee Curtis. So he, he did mention that Seinfeld was the big break that got him pretty much introduced to the world but before Seinfeld you know he was getting some steady acting gigs on sitcoms so he definitely included that as well he said his first job was at a yogurt place and he didn't really go into too much detail on it I guess maybe it wasn't that great of a job I mean I always think of you know your first job being something that you know you'd kind of want to talk about maybe expand upon a little bit you know maybe it it was a crappy job uh, so that's what he did do though when he was in high school he worked at like a uh, a yogurt place that sold other type of healthy foods you know it was in California so he definitely didn't seem like uh, too excited about it or that he had a great time at that job just making a buck, I guess. 
you know, I think he had a pretty important message, you know, when I was asking if he ever had a backup plan. He's like, no, I, I don't believe in backup plans when you're a kid, you know, like when you're in your 20s, you're chasing the dream. He mentioned his two sons are in the acting business and he basically said, enjoy the ride. Don't think about success. Don't think about making it because what he said, you know, some of the most successful, richest people in the world that are very unhappy. And I couldn't agree with him more. Enjoy the ride. You know, what's success anyway? I guess it's being happy. What did Biggie Small say? Mo money, more problems. Pretty cool guy. Warbs. Patrick Warburton. Check out the new movie, The Duel, which is going to be on uh, streaming everywhere August 16th. So that'll do it for another episode of Celebrity Jobber. Past episodes up on CelebrityJobber.com. Check out YouTube.com slash the at sign Celebrity Jobber and streaming on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. Please subscribe. Would love a five-star rating and leave a review. You don't know what would have happened to these famous people if... They didn't catch their big break. I can probably say Patrick Warburton would have had a better shot working at a yogurt place than he would have being a marine biologist. But who knows? Pretty excited for next week. It's a milestone for the Celebrity Jobber Podcast. Episode 100. Wow, I can't believe it. Until next week, thank you so much for listening. I'm Jeff Zito.